Welcome, everyone, to the Asian Voices Radio Podcast, where you'll find real Asian American conversations, including all the topics you are too afraid to ask your Asian parents. I'm your host, Linda Schwartz, and today we have a special episode that focuses on an important topic of health and wellness with two board certified doctors who will share their tips and expertise on how we can help our families and kids stay healthy in preparing for the summer. So we have Dr. Kwa Trong of KDT Optometry, who is also a host of a popular talk show on VNTV, and Dr. Cindy Tsai, a board certified medical doctor who was also an author, physician, and wellness expert. <laughs> Hello, Dr. Kwa and Dr. Tsai. Welcome to the show. How are you today? We're doing well. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Great. So Dr. Tsai, tell me a little bit about yourself and your work and what you do in the world. Sure. So I'm a board certified internal medicine physician who transitioned to entrepreneurship, speaking, and life coaching. And I recently released a best selling book. It's a self help book based in mindfulness. It's called So Much Better with practical tips and strategies to help people feel so much better and become their own inspiring success story. Awesome. And what about you, Dr. Kwa? Yes, I am a uh, UC Berkeley. I'm from San Diego originally. I have an office inside Sam's Club in San Diego. We're the only Sam's Club around. And as you mentioned, I had a talk show, or I have a talk show called KTT Optometry Show on Vietnamese television. I was doing that as kind of like a um, general health awareness and health, health community outreach, just to discuss all things from eyes to life and everything in between. So, um, but yeah, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really uh, excited to be here. Join you, ladies. Yeah, so let's get right into it. I'm really excited about today's topic because I, for one, have a toddler. We're always looking for fun things to do in the summer, and we're very health conscious people. So, you know, with everything going on in the world, you know, with COVID and all these other things, um, what do you think is the top maybe two or three things that parents should think about when they're getting ready to take their kids out for the summer. Dr. Sai? So I think that there's so many things that we could do, especially now that it's summertime and there are, as things open up, it's great to be outdoors. I think a really important key is sun protection especially when you're out and about. So making sure you have the appropriate um, ways for sun protection, whether it's sunscreen and also with appropriate clothing and also the importance of staying hydrated when you're out and about, right? A lot of times we're out playing and then we never remember to drink water and then um, the whole day goes by. So I would say definitely sun protection and staying hydrated is important while you're out. <laughs> So I have a question about that before we get to Dr. Kwa and his couple of tips. Um, so with the sun protection, I know that for myself, I really, really love clean products. So what would you recommend for families like ours? Yeah, I think it's really important to have to use clean products when you can. Um, I think there are great information there's great database information like ewg online is a great resource where it you can search different products and it'll show different chemicals and things that it contains so that um, that's one of my favorite websites to use to look at different products to see um, is this a good product to use, um, especially for people who have sensitive skin and also for kids, you know, when they're, because they're still developing, it's, they're very sensitive to chemicals, especially. So you want to be really mindful of the products that you are using and bring into your household. 
great. Thanks. Mm-hmm. All right, Dr. Kwa. Yes. So, well, I'm an eye doctor, so I always recommend, especially with kids, be outdoors. You know, we're, we're, we're nowadays kids are using their laptops, their iPads, their, and so their their eyes are as, as they focus up close, their eyes are getting worse. That's why nearsightedness is at all time high. So I, I always tell parents, you know, give your Bring your kids outside. Give them that vitamin D, that sunshine. Of course, get that sun protection too. We want too much, but to protect their skin. But use their eyes to look things far away, and you know, like play hide and seek like we used to. You know, just be active, and uh, just as them as they're more active, their mind's more active, their body's more active. They're more in shape. They're healthier. Um, and so, yeah, that'd be number one. And number two, just find things that they love doing. You know, whether it be hide and seek, as I mentioned, or riding bikes. I'm a big fan of riding bikes. You know, just be outdoors and rather than just be cooked up in the house. And that just overall, that would be great for their mental health to socialize with other kids being out there, out and about rather than being at home and on their phone or their little iPad. That's great advice. I know. So I grew up on the TV. I didn't have an <laughs> iPad, but <laughs> I don't my that. vision is so bad right now because of that <laughs> television set. Um, so at any rate, the good news is my husband is actually out with my son right now and they're out. Um, they go on hikes and they explore a lot. So um, and that's great advice. I, I never really thought about, you know, vision care when for my kid. Um, so that's a great, great tip. And what I really love about you guys is you have um, some very holistic ways of, of being in the world, so to speak, and your practice and how you integrate um, traditional Western medicine, but also integrate, you know, Western or Eastern philosophies, perhaps, or even um, a more holistic view of the way that you are with people and your patients. So Dr. Sai, can you talk a little bit about what, um, what your philosophy is in your work and, and how you, um, how, how you handle or deal with patients? Yeah, absolutely. So for me, I, I think, having gone through medical training, um, one thing that I noticed was how often we tend to look for prescriptions as a quick fix. And for me, I really wanted to do more than prescribe medications as a band-aid, because I think true wellness and healing is, is really taking that integrative approach and looking at the whole picture. And I think it's important to remember that it's not one size fits all, you know, everyone's different. So the things you need are different. And what I love about taking this integrative medicine approach is that you get to take what works, you know, there's definitely a lot of information and evidence with a lot of Western practices, um, the science, the research, and also bringing in different complementary alternative therapies that can be very effective and useful that maybe not as um, isn't as mainstream acupuncture, you know, all these other modalities, visualization, and, you know, things like that mindfulness to really help people attain true wellness overall. Great. So and what's your definition of wellness? I know you kind of touched on it with all of these integrative terminologies, but and also, can you define what integrative medicine is for people who might not know what that means? Yeah, absolutely. So integrative medicine is a subspecialty within um, medicine. And it basically is a field where you take the um, conventional Western therapies and the complementary alternative therapies, and really putting the patient at the center of their care. So um, I really think this is the future of medicine. You know, it's not one size fits all. It's, you know, different things work for different people. And knowing that depending on where you are, different things will work for you too, right? It's an ongoing process and evolution. And so I think it's just really important to work with a team of providers who can listen, who are going to work with you, and who um, have that more, um, I guess, holistic, integrative approach to really look at the root cause and not just like, you know, treat the symptoms and put a Band-Aid on. Yeah, I I really love that approach because, um, you know, all the symptoms that we have are just a 
symptoms of a deeper issue that we really need to get to the root cause of. And I love that, that that's the type of work that you do because, you know, modern medicine really just treats the symptoms and sometimes you just don't get anywhere with that. And, and I'm not going to go into personal stories right now, but, um, (laughs) but I definitely love, I love the idea of having an integrated approach um, because you get the best of both worlds and you really do attack and get to the root cause of, of the issue of the health issue. So, so Dr. Kwa, yes. what, is, what are your philosophies in your work? I'd so, love to hear about it. You yeah, have something, definitely. Yeah. I, well, I'm an eye doctor, as you know. And um, so patients always ask, you know, how do I keep my eyes healthy? So people don't realize, but eyes are the extension of our bodies. So if our bodies are healthy, most likely our eyes are healthy. So a lot of times little tips I'll give patients is, you know, wear sunglasses outside. Take frequent breaks. Like we, we work in a world where computer use is most for most of our jobs. So there's a thing called the 2020 rule. So basically, every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break, look at 20 feet away. So what that does is it relaxes the muscles of our eyes. So it's not so locked in. It doesn't feel like because you think about it, when we're focused up close, it's like carrying around a two pound dumbbell. It's not very heavy, but towards the end of the day, our arms we don't let go. Our arms will just be fried, right? Our forearms, our wrists. So a lot of it is, as Dr. Sai mentioned, you know, it's an integrative approach. It's a, a wellness to me is like homeostasis, where it basically means balance. Balance in our minds, our bodies, just overall where we feel at peace. You know, it's, it's like we live in this world now where there's so much chaos and, you know, it's just sometimes there's so much stress, stressors that sometimes it's not. But we, we can't control the stress, but we control our minds. And control how we react to it. So, I, I, I to my patients, I always let them know. You know, you got you know patients who have diabetes. People don't realize, but that that's one of the leading causes of blindness. Uh, you know, people who whose blood sugars are just out of control. And then when you see little kids with diabetes, it's just heartbreaking because a lot of it is diet, unless they have a juvenile onset. But a lot of times, it's just type two. It's just what they eat, unfortunately, and not lack of exercise. Um, and so I'm, I'm all with Dr. Sai and about uh, integrating, you know, going to the root cause. Because let's say a headache, for example, or someone has eye pain. There's a reason for the eye pain. I'd rather not just describe, you know, prescribe like a Tylenol for the pain. We got to see why there is that pain. Um, and so it, it, the bandage approach is good for the quick fix, but we want to basically treat, treat the root cause versus just, yeah, as you mentioned, um, there's a lot of times where it's just the medicines of the Western medicine, we're just doing the bandage approach. So. So, Dr. Kwa, what about these blue blocker eyeglasses and sun? What are they? I don't even know what they are, but I know that. Oh, so basically, when we, obviously we use the computer a lot. Well, actually, we're on a computer right now as we speak. But what happens is when, the, when we're using the computer, uh, the screen emits this blue light. And what that causes, a lot of ocular fatigue or eye fatigue. And so what these glasses do that a lot of people are using now is it helps block the certain wavelength. And so our, our eyes feel more at ease. And so we don't get so strained and stressed out with our eyes towards in the day. So it's more of like a comfort thing. Actually, I use it personally, my own uh, sunglasses, uh, eyeglasses. Um, and so it does help. Um, right. I definitely recommend it as an add-on awesome. to many, to many and patients. I under- as I understand it, you have a philosophy of, of pillars. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, we, we all go through tough times in life, right? It's just uh, so I found personally in my personal journey, through my struggles and uh, that there's these four, I call four pillars of life. Um, the four P's, I call it. Uh, one is positive energy, positivity. I'll, I'll first name it and I'll kind of go into it. Um, positivity, passion, purpose, and persistence. And so those four P's, I think if you kind of, you know, I, I can obviously break it down, but we can do several episodes about each P, but I just want to mention it, but it's, it's helped me a lot. Um, you know, it's kind of self-explanatory, but of course it can be broken down. Um, if for me, it's helped a lot and I think it could help a lot of people. And, you know, we, we hear about these things through different, um, platforms. Um, but I kind of, that's what's worked for me and, uh, just to stay strong, you know, obviously persistent through anything that comes your way and always having tried to that positive energy, right? So I'm just doing a little briefer, um, having a sense of purpose, uh, what, why you're here, what things do you want to accomplish? And, um, so yeah. And then the last one. Let's see. What <laughs> I'm having a brain freeze. So the four positivity, persistence, purpose, and passion. And so if you go through life with a lot of passion and zest and just energy, 
Um, you know, you, the world is your oyster, I think. You know, you go after what you want and present it with a great passion. And a lot of people are perceptive to that. Great. I love that. I love that philosophy. So positivity, mm -hmm. Pos passion, passion purpose, purpose, and persistence. persistence. Yes. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, that's the so, passions that I had a, the brain fart on. So sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. It happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can tell when you have such great energy. You're always positive. Every time I talk to you, you just, you, you are what you say you are. When you I talk try that, to. That, that, that Thank is, you. I, I can tell that you live and embrace that philosophy. I'm humbled by that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, you know, now that that summer is here, I feel, I feel like it, it's here. Is it official? I don't even know if it's officially here yet. I think Memorial Day is official. Well, not official, but it's considered like the start of summer, right? I but, don't even, I don't know. But I think it's like I don't June even know when, or... when Memorial, it did Memorial Day even <laughs> happen yet? Like, it did, it did. Um, so, but, you know, let, let's let talk a little bit about like practical tips and things. You know, what, what, can, talk about a, your daily routine. Like, what do you do to keep yourself in that wellness mm -hmm. and the balance? Um, sure. You know, what you do to make sure that you're at, you're at your optimum level throughout the day. So Dr. Sai, talk about your, your daily routine to keep your wellness and your health in check with like the environment. So I would say that my routine has definitely evolved over time and continues to. Um, in general, I think that the morning and the evening routine is most important. So really staying on top of that. So every morning when I wake up, I do meditate for a short amount of time. I set intentions. I look at my day and I um, really visualize how and how I want my day to go. And I think it's really helpful because a lot of times we tend to start our days in a rush and then we don't really um, take time to think about how we want things to go. So I find that first thing in the morning, that peace and quiet is really, really important for me personally to really have that time and be mindful and to recognize like, hey, what are some things that are really important to me? Um, how do I want this to go? How do I want to show up? Um, all of these things to really set the tone. And then, of course, having a really good nutritious breakfast um, and then kind of continuing on starting my day, various meetings and, and things like that. Um, and then um, healthy, nutritious lunch, um, taking time in between breaks, things like that. And I usually do like to end the day with some type of walk or exercise and then um, – having a nice dinner, um, connecting with friends, loved ones. Um, and then at the end of the day, definitely giving a lot of gratitude for um, how the day went, reflections, things like that. So um, that's pretty much my routine. Great. And what about you, Dr. Kwa? Yeah, so I usually like to start the day. Um, well, first of all, you try to get enough sleep, right? Everyone has a certain, they always say like eight hours is optimum, but it, it actually depends on your own body. So some people need more, some people need less. It's You listen to your body. And so I try to get seven, seven hours. I uh, try to wake, you know, go to bed early, wake up early, and I start the day with some type of exercise. For me, my passion is uh, road cycling and mountain biking. Uh, and so I, that's where I get my meditation and I get my peace and I find, you know, that real serenity, especially when it's early in the mornings um, to get the heart beating fast, to get the adrenaline running. And it gives me a great start to the day. And I usually I'm off two days, um, but to, like today I'm off. But uh, a lot of times I then I start I start work around 10. And then as uh, nutrition is obviously very important, as Dr. Sai mentioned, try to eat healthy. But, you know, sometimes you, you can splurge, right? Especially if you it's all about calories in, calories out. You want to make sure you have a good uh, you don't have too much excess because some of that can store as fat if you don't burn it off. Um, so, you know, great day at work. Try, try to uh, tr try to always connect uh, with my patients and then connect with my friends and family throughout the day. Uh, especially it's real helpful with social media now. And, and, you know, at night, it's always good to wind down. And that's where I find I do a little bit of a meditation myself. And just um, 
what work really works for me to help me sleep is I actually I listen to rain. So I have a Spotify and I use rain or I use like nature. So I have like bird sounds playing. <laughs> I don't know what my wife's thinking, but it sounds like a forest in my room. But I find it really, you know, I sleep like a baby, right? Because you just hear, try it. You know, I usually recommend it to a lot of my friends and family. You know, if you have trouble sleeping or actually even if you don't have trouble sleeping, because you, as you're sleeping, you're actually hearing these sounds. And it's it, just it, so it, relaxing. It is, right? Especially rain too. And I, you know, and then why not give, you know, there's no real rain. You can simulate that through other, you know, if you don't have Spotify, you could do YouTube. There's a lot of, obviously a lot of mediums you could go yeah. through to get that. So that's but great. Attaining that homeostasis, right? That balance. Is the key. Yes. So obviously you guys don't have kids. <laughs> obviously. Because <laughs> yeah, let, no. me t- let me tell you about my morning routine. Okay. Yeah. okay? <laughs> please, please. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. Because um, I have a three-year-old who yeah. wakes up with an abundance of energy. And no matter what I say and what I do, like, I will try to, you know, and, and I'm like Dr. Sai. When I wake up, I, I like to have some quiet time. And, and you know, one of the tips that I've, I got was, well, invite him into that. Invite him into that, uh, that space with you. Like, there is no inviting a three-year-old to snuggle and be quiet, okay? <laughs> it's like, for, for parents out there, it has to, like, for me, it has to be intentional, you know, like taking that time away from the chaos, like, and most parents out there understand what I'm saying when we say that as soon as we wake up, this from the start of our day to the end of our day, it's just constant. And if you're a stay-at-home mom like me, the noise in your ear, mommy, mommy, I want this. I want, you know, it's, it's just incessant. And so what I like to do, and, and luckily my husband is very involved. Um, so, you know, I get moments, I get the afternoon off and I like to go for a walk on the beach and get my feet, you know, there's this idea of grounding can, you know, and I know that for a lot of people, that's kind of like a woo woo new age kind of thing. But can, can one of you talk about the, the benefits of just putting your feet, your bare feet in like sand or on the earth, what that does? I'm I'm happy to share. So I think it's really a great practice to um, do that where you're barefoot and you're out, you know, whether it's um, on the beach, whether it's at the park. And how I explain it is because a lot of times when we're stressed and worried and anxious, it's a lot of nervous energy, right? That's like in our heads. And we only have so much energy in a day. And a lot of times when we get anxious and worked up, it's like this ongoing loop, right? Where it's like ongoing and we can't stop it. And so why I really do encourage and like grounding practices is because it helps you, you can just visualize like that energy coming down into the ground and like coming down through you and into the earth, right? And it almost kind of like brings your energy down in terms of like calming your whole system down so you're not as stressed out. And so um, I talk a lot about mind-body medicine and how the mind and the body are very much connected. And I think this is a really great practice because a lot of times we um, have almost like lost sight of like how things feel in our bodies. And so I think this is a great practice of just being like, hey, close your eyes just for a few seconds and try to feel your toes, right? Like feel the sand in between your toes, underneath your feet. Like what does that really feel like? And that oftentimes really helps people um, decrease their stress levels and like help them ground and stay more calm in a better state of um, health. Great. Dr. Kwa, do you have anything to say about that? 
Sure. Yeah, I personally don't do. I walk bare feet in the sand. I actually would love to, but I don't live near the beach. And if I walk barefoot out in the, the, the where the trails are, I'll get all cut up. <laughs> so, but uh, Dr. Sai made a great point about reconnecting with nature. Uh, so for me, when I mountain bike, I love doing the trail and then going out where there's trees, foliage, and it's just so peaceful. And it's about finding that balance to lower your energy, to calm your mind. Because, you know, with this stressful world, we can get really riled up and wound up. And that really affects us mentally and physically. And it degrades our health, you know, in all aspects. And so, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of grounding. I wish I could ground more, actually. Uh, but especially with, you know, near the ocean. And then, uh, and when I was in Hawaii not too long ago, I loved oh, it. Oh, isn't that amazing? I, I, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's yeah. Such a simple, I, I was able to walk far feet. Yeah, it's such a simple mm -hmm. practice. And you can literally do it anywhere. I yep. mean, I'm a big fan of it. Definitely. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, that's something that I like to do, especially in a busy day, we have a little, a little backyard and, um, whenever I kind of feel like he's driving me crazy, we, we, we go outside and, and take our feet, our, our shoes off and, and walk on the ground and, and it's really nice. So, um, so that's great. I, I really enjoy all the tips and things. Um, so I know Dr. Kwa talked a little bit about getting enough sleep, but can you sh and share a little bit about like why it's so important to get a good amount of sleep and what the recommended, um, you know, how many hours do you recommend? Okay. So I would say in general, I tell patients Sleep is really important. Um, I would say seven to nine hours a night is reasonable for most people. And yes, there are some people, they have certain um, genes and whatever, so they don't necessarily need a lot of sleep. Um, but for most people, um, seven to nine hours is a good amount of time. And I think it's really important to really listen to your body, right? There are days when you're gonna need more and days when you're okay running on less. Um, and the reason sleep is so important is because it's really a time for our brains to um, clear away a lot of the mental stressors that happened in the day. And it's also when we can really consolidate our memories and learning and all the things. So it's really important to get good quality sleep so that your brain is functioning at an optimal level. Great. Dr. Kwa, do you have anything to add? Yes. To yeah, definitely. So I mentioned previously, I, I use the like the rain and but yeah, the reason why it's so important for us to get sleep is as Dr. Sai mentioned mentally, but also physically, our cells are healing. Our our set our skin is uh, mitosis is dividing. Our, our our brain is healing. So that's a time when a lot of our cell think about our body just heals during that time. And so by getting enough, we need it. Um, and I'm actually a big fan of afternoon naps. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. They are so 15 minutes. Like for me, is golden. So luckily, I have an hour lunch. So I, I set a time like 15 minutes. I recline my exam chair and I'm knocked out with the tunes of Sade or oh, Enya. I love Sade. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. You do some, uh, yeah, Shadi or Enya, and I'm good, right? That's just, that's my afternoon nap uh, schedule. So, but yeah, as Dr. Sai mentioned, uh, sleep is just of utmost important for us to function properly. That's so that's so great. So, I can I share my little nighttime routine? Please, yes, please. So, I like to take a few supplements, and mm -hmm. sometimes I'll take a little bit of melatonin. But I started having melatonin nightmares, so I stopped that. Mm, and okay. now I just do two bags of uh, chamomile tea. So that's, you know, part of my like wind down and my relaxation and I'll drink the tea. And I'm telling you, chamomile tea is amazing. It's an amazing mm -hmm. supplement to help you sleep. But can you, can one of you, uh, Dr. Kwa, can you talk a little bit about melatonin and yes. what, like, is it helpful to take supplement like melatonin supplements? And I've the one of the reasons why I stopped is because one, the melatonin nightmares mm -hmm. were kind of crazy and they got really mm -hmm. scary. So I was like, I'm not going to do that anymore. Maybe I was taking a little too much, but, mm -hmm. um, but I really, I was like, I'm going to take as much as I think I can handle so I can get knocked out. But that's just the <laughs> single mom in me or not the single mom. 
Um, say it, Homa. Um, <laughs> you're, not single, yeah, you're not single. No, I'm not. I'm totally not. Um, <laughs> you're taking. But you're taking. you know, I know that. I know that um, because melatonin is something that we naturally make, right? Mm-hmm. So, yes. if we take yes. a supplement, can you talk a little bit about the benefits sure. and also like how much we should be taking? Sure. Well, melatonin, as you mentioned, is a natural substance produced in our body, but some people don't have enough or they don't produce enough. And so it, 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 what, how it works is it regulates our circadian rhythm. So basically our, t- our t- uh, time clock or cycle uh, when we sleep, when we get tired, how much sleep we need. So uh, w- when people take melatonin, it, it helps to get, let, get us sleepy and regulate some of that cycle. But of course, it doesn't work for everyone. So we have to listen to our bodies. Like for you, it, one of the side effects was those nightmares. You don't want no, you don't want no nightmares. <laughs> yeah. You don't want Freddy Krueger coming in, coming after you. <laughs> so, but but it does work well for a lot of people. And the amount it depends on the individual. And you would discuss that with your medical doctor. So I'm not a big expert, but Doctor Sai can definitely go into that yeah. more detail about the probably the supplementation, the amount that's necessary. <sighs> So I think melatonin can be very helpful for many people to help with sleep. Um, I think the concern is, of course, dosing and because it varies depending on the person. But also with supplements, we always need to be really mindful of the company brand, right? Because it's not as tightly regulated in terms of the quality of the um, supplements. So even though on the bottle, it may say three milligrams, you may not actually be getting three milligrams, right? Some companies, they might be putting a lot more, um, just depending on their quality control or a lot less. So I think that's why, um, there can be some discrepancies in terms of how well melatonin and all just all supplements in general work for certain people. Um, but I think melatonin can be helpful for some people. Again, listen to your body. And just in general, I think for sleep, best things really recommending things like sleep hygiene, which doesn't sound glamorous, but it really works. Um, you know, it's as um, Dr. Koa mentioned earlier with like the blue light canceling glasses, right? Putting those on, especially bedtime, turning off your devices an hour before just to minimize that exposure because all those things, blue light can keep you awake and really disrupt the circadian rhythm so that you don't get your natural um, sleep um, triggers with melatonin to, to kind of get into a restful state of sleep. Great. I love it. Thank you guys. So, you know, I just one more thing about sleep, sleeping, because In my world, before um, I discovered why sleep was so important, I was one of these people who would literally lie awake at night with my list of to-do, you know, things that I needed to do, like keeping me awake. And and it, it, it became this vicious cycle where I would wake up tired, I would be grouchy, I would be, you know, mean to, like, it was an extension, this sleep deprivation was an extension of, um, like my way of being in the world. Like I became, you know, just irritated all the time. And then I discovered why sleep was so important. And I was like, okay, I'm going to sleep train myself. You know how you sleep train kids? I, I did that to myself and I'm telling you ever since I did that and I, typically get about eight or nine hours of sleep every night, even with a toddler. Um, you know, in the beginning days, it wasn't like that. But um, but now, you know, my mood is much better. I'm always, you know, I feel better. I feel like I can, can get through my day. And, um, you know, I just feel like the circadian rhythm, if you guys don't know about it, go research that. Sleep train yourself. Go to bed at a certain time every single night until you, until your body gets used to it. So at any rate, that's all I have to say about sleeping, get it. And, um, you know, we're coming up at the top of our time together, you guys, it was such a great, uh, time being with you. And I wish we could talk more and maybe you guys can come on again in the future. And, um, that way we can talk you know, more about different topics and, and continue this conversation. But, um, before we go, you know, tell people where they can find you on social media, if you have social media pages or your website, Dr. Sai. 
Sure. Well, I'm happy to connect with people on social media. My handle is at Cindy Sai MD, C I N D Y T S A I N D. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, all the、um, social media channels. And then you can also visit my website, Cindy Sai MD.com, for more information. Thank you. Dr. Kwa? So, yes, so you can find me personally at Sam's Club in San Diego. I'm the only Sam's Club around.、Uh, drop by, say hello.、Um, you can find me on Instagram at、um, iDocqua, so E Y E D O C K H O A.、Um, Facebook, KDT Optometry. I have a Facebook business page and also a website, kdtoptometry.com, where I'd be happy to answer any of your questions about the eyes and life and anything in between. Great. Thank you guys. Thank you for so much for having us. Absolutely. Well, you guys, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. I want to thank our guests, Dr. Kwa Trong and Dr. Cindy Sai, for joining us. If you have any suggestions for future guests or topics, we'd love to hear from you. Also, be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform, as well as follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Asian Voices Radio is produced by Asian Culture and Media Alliance, a nonprofit that empowers our API community with a Voice through media arts. If you would like to support our program and make a donation, please visit AsianVoicesRadio.com. And thank you for listening. I'm your host, Linda Schwartz. Please join us next week for another exciting and thought provoking Asian Voices Radio show. 